And I did all of chapter 22, and, and some of you have already kind of got it started, and or a few people have talked to me, and they said, wow, that was sure a lot easier than the other six chapters. And I went, yeah, it, it's pretty much getting easier now. But what I was going to do is blast through um, the... Uh, the, the lecture, and then we'll do like the first five problems. Um, I think the best way to do it is to do the first five problems from your, um, from your homework, and then you, go, you all can do the uh, problems. I was getting ready to make one of the problems extra credit, but then when I looked at it, I went, oh, oh, this isn't that hard. It's just on showing you the depth of the thing, okay? And um, you'll get certain... Uh, you get certain, yeah, so that's what we'll do. I don't know what it, where I was going with that other thing. All right, now, but we're also going to, we need it. We need to kind of do a quiz today, too. So as we're going through the homework, have a separate sheet of paper because we're going to derive, you're, you're actually going to derive some of the answers, okay, and you'll turn that in for your quiz just so you can say, I mean, I could have you just turn in a sheet of paper with your name on it, but let's have something that you turn in, all right? So... So I kind of have a separate sheet of paper, and, and we'll be going through the uh, homework here, and I'll say, all right, this is a quiz question. Do this one. Okay. And then on Friday, then on Friday, we will start uh, chapter 23 and do look at the uh, mirror equation. We'll, we'll do spherical and uh, conical mirrors, and um, we might be able to get some lenses in. Uh, well, we'll do. We'll we'll just kind of do the mirror equation, and that'll be enough for the little quiz we'll take on Wednesday, or the little test we'll take a, a week from today. As a matter of fact, so it'll be over chapter 21, straightforward fastball down the middle type question on chapter 21. Like here's the free. Ba here's basically what chapter 21 is going to entail. Nothing with phasers. Nothing with all that kind of stuff. Um, but you will have to, uh, there will probably be a problem that you'll have to, given the frequency, given the capacitance, given the inductance, can you come up with the impedance? And can you come up with the IRMS? And, uh, oh, and you're going to be given the VRMS. And can you come up with the peak voltage and the peak uh, current that might be coming through there and the uh, dissipated power going through the, going through the resistor? That kind of stuff. So... Real straightforward. What's that? What's that? It's yeah. I'll send it. Well, it's basically just it's it's basically just finding impedance and all the things you know. VRMS equals IRMS times Z and what all the things that Z incorporates. Okay. So XL got to find XL, XC, all that kind of stuff using the frequency, capacitance, or the inductance. Piece of cake, actually. All right, now, so this one, and then when we get to chapter 22, we're basically looking at two or three more equations or stuff that are, that are just geometry. They're pretty easy to work with, actually. All right, basically it's this. Here's the big thing. The, when, a, when, a, when light hits something, like right now there's not enough intensity here, so it's not reflecting too much, but like when light comes in, bing, hits the surface of something, hits a reflecting surface, it bounces off the, the we're going to use monochromatic rays basically, so it's coming in here, bang, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. All right, so we'll look at a couple of those. And then... All right, so specular or regular reflection, nice, very, very smooth surface. That's what Galileo, since we're kind of in the, his 400th anniversary of Galileo and all his work and everything else, that's what he was doing with his telescopes. He would polish that glass down so he wouldn't get this, something like this, very rough surface, so he, he could get a nice, clear picture, okay? All right. In other words, he wanted that thing smooth, 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 smooth. All right. And we've already kind of done problems like this, okay? I think we looked at one real quick. All right. Basically, it's the reflection, theta i going in equals theta r. P 
piece of cake, that part. Now, when, here's, now refraction means this. Here's what refraction means. When, a, when light comes in, it hits the glass, what's it do? It bends, okay? That ray bends. And what we're going to find out here using Snell's law here, now, the velocity of the light coming in, it's going through air, which is pretty much It'll frustrate you again. So anyway, but basically, here's the, here's the deal. You got something coming in. All right. Nice surface here. In fact, okay. Ray coming in. Normal. We measure everything off the normal. Here's the incident coming in. Make that normal come on all the way through. Theta R coming out. So theta I equals theta r, and those over there can't see what I'm doing at all. All right, now, if this is 1.00, has an index of refraction, in of air, we call it the index of refraction, and water is 1.33, that's the in of water, then what this is going to do is it will bend, you'd think it'd go like this, it just comes straight through here, but it doesn't. It's going to bend what we say towards the normal. It's going to bend like this. So this theta right here, this theta, let's call this 2. Theta 2, if I use the incident ray, theta 2 is going to be less than theta i. Okay? But now, what would happen if you shine a flashlight from inside the water? you got one of those high-powered diving lights, and it's coming out. For the benefit of the people sitting over here, we'll do it this way. Now... Let's say we're doing, we're doing this. We got, oh, there we go, much better. All right, now this time we've got in of water out here, 1.33, and we're, fla uh, we're flashing our light like this, boom, comes in, theta I. There's going to be a little reflection coming back to us, theta R. But this time, since this is air, coming out, it's going to bend away from the normal. So if the incident, the index of refraction of the incident ray is greater than the incident, than the refraction here, here's your theta 2, then in this case, theta 2 is going to be greater than theta i. All right? So, which basically means it bends away. So, if you're on this one, on this one, what this means is you're actually... If you're looking, if you actually see something down here, your brain sees it right here. Okay? That's what that means. All right? Your brain is going, oh, well that fish is just, you know, this, this many meters deep. He's not that many meters deep. All right? So, if you throw a spear straight at this guy, you're going to miss him. All right? So that's why when you're, so if you ever are on Survivor or anything like that, you got to go spear fishing, all right? And you see this little um, grouper there, small little grouper there on the coral reef. You're going to stab him, throw it way behind him, right here. Because what you're seeing is you're going to throw it here way in front of him, so throw it way behind him and you might be able to get him. All right, so that's all the stuff we're going to talk about, okay? And basically what this boils down to Oh, here we go. Much better picture. I figured they'd have much better pictures. All right, here we go. Medium one, medium two. It's coming in. Yeah, it's about the same. Yeah, this is good old geometry. I can, I can do geometry problems all day long without much trouble. So here we go. All right. Theta one, theta two. Boom. All right, now, index of refraction. It's basically, here's how we figure the index of refraction. Take the speed of light in a vacuum. Divided by the velocity, now the light slows down, all right? 
So basically what happens is its frequency of the light will stay the same. Its frequency will stay the same, but therefore its wavelength changes when it's going through. Because uh, remember, I don't know if you remember, I don't know if we even talked about it, that the speed of light is equal to lambda, whatever wavelength you're talking about, times its frequency. Okay, well the same thing with the velocity is equal to lambda times the frequency. And if the frequency stays the same, so this is um, lambda in the medium, and this is lambda in air. All right, so the wave, all right? So that's what they're going to talk about. I bet you they're going to talk about this in the next one. So C is always greater than V, right? Or equal to it if it's going through the same thing, all right? It's going through the same thing. Um, because nothing can exceed the speed of light. Boom. So you get this. Lambda of the medium is equal to regular lambda divided by n, by the index of refraction. And right here they give you some nice index, indices of refraction. All right. Notice all the way down here you've got diamond. You've got a diamond which has a very high index of refraction. That means once light gets into it, especially in air, it has a lot of internal reflection. In other words, it can't get out. So it bounces around inside there. That's what makes a diamond sparkle. All right? That's why it's so sparkly, is because it's got a high um, index of refraction. And that's why good old cubit zirconian, zircon there, um, is sparkly too. And you might be able to fool somebody that you're not really sure about. Anyway, no, kidding. All right. Go, oh well, that only costs, you know. 1995 on the uh, QVC. All right. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Okay, now. Okay, chemistry people. Or any, do I have any rock jocks in here? Any geologists? No? No rock jocks? All right. Anyway, flint. What's flint? Isn't that mostly carbon? Chemistry folks? Kind of? Isn't it? So Zerk, and so Flint and the diamond, it's just, it all boils down to the, the good old lattice structure that you're talking about. All right, so there's all that. I think, there we go. Now, here's the big law. Write this one down. You got to know this guy. N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. Okay? All right. We're N1. Is your, ins is your medium, is your first medium, sine theta 1 is your angle of incidence, N2 is the second medium right here, and sine theta 2 is your uh, angle of refraction. Okay. All right. So all the big ideas here. Okay, that's all good. That doesn't mean anything. Oh, this is kind of cool. Basically, it tells you how mirages are formed by light refracting through air of different temperatures. And therefore, it's got different densities. Okay? So when the air is, the air on the bottom is, is less dense than the cooler air. So therefore, you got this larger N up here. And so it reflects differently. And so you can kind of, you get this mirror image here of the uh, warm air has a smaller N. So therefore, it's, you get this like mirror image thing is what your brain sees. It also sees this thing. It also sees the minivan coming at you. Or I guess they're out of gas in the depth. Oh, this could be a really sad story. <laughs> I got to make another slide with vultures and bones. OK. So what you get for driving a minivan, I guess. All right, anyway. Now, oh, so here we go. Here's, here's that idea of they're just reaching for the goldfish, okay? This could have a sad tale, too, at the end, you know, the little kid reaching in the fish tank. All right. Okay, and refraction. In other words, objects appear. If you're looking at it from air, if you're looking at it from the air down through the, the heavy thing, uh, through the uh, water, this thing actually raises up a little bit. It actually looks a lot closer, all right? 
And we're going to work through that thing here in a minute, but it's kind of an ugly derivation, but the problem actually comes out to be very easy. But anyway, so it looks closer. Now, how many of you, you've been in a swimming pool? I don't know if you've ever done this, but remember when you were a kid or something like that, and you'd look up, you're underwater, and you look up, and it looks like that diving board, that little three-foot diving board looks really far away now, all right, from when you jumped in. And the reason is, if you're down here, if you're actually in the water looking at the penny up here, it looks further away, all right, because here you're refracting, you're bending towards the normal. Well, if you bend away from the normal, then you're going to find that penny is going to be a lot further, is going to look further away. All right, and we'll get to those formulas. Did they give us one? No, they should. Oh, well, don't worry about it. All right, anyway, we'll get to it here in a second. All right, now, here's where we find the critical angle. Things are the critical angle, N2 divided by N1, light impinging on the boundary at this, or a, a larger angle will be reflected. This is called the total internal reflection. Now, here's what we mean by that. Here's what we mean by that. Here's a better picture than what they've got. And then we'll start your homework problems. And we'll take our little quiz here, too. All right, here's what we mean. Now, and I'll draw the same thing over there. I'll try and get out of the way. All right, let's say we shoot a beam of light. We're in water. All right, we're in water. Here, we shoot this beam of light. Boom, like this. Okay? Now, there's my angle of incidence. It's right here. Now, this is where I'm going about this. Now, when it hits here, Remember, it's going to bend away from the normal. So if I get it just at the right angle, if I get it right at the right angle, then it'll bend away at 90 degrees. Or it'll bend away at an angle off the normal that's even greater than 90 degrees, and it'll bend this way. All right? So if it's bending greater than 90 off the normal, it's coming down here like this, and so it's totally internally reflected. And that's what diamonds do, because they have such a high because their in is so big down here, as opposed to the air out here, that a lot of the light stays inside there, totally internally reflected. So therefore, makes them all, as Rain Man said, very sparkly. She was sparkly. Anyway, all right. Now, OK. Total internal reflection we use in fiber optics. And this is just for a regular camera type thing. All right, oh, and here's the diamond. All right, let's go to your homework, though. That's much more interesting than the, these slides. That's pretty much the chapter. You pretty much got it right there. All right? That was it. All right, now, there's some, I mean, they got some cool slides on there, I guess, to look at. But anyway, let's go to this. All right, now, let's go to the mastering. I knew there was something I forgot to log on here. Uh, this is, can be tedious. Register. Oh, I think I typed that wrong. Yep, I knew it. Gosh, dang it. What's that? What's the password? Uh. Oh, I know it's wrong. I just used my old password. There we go. Let's try the new one. Come on now. Okay, that means it's working, but it takes forever to load. Uh-oh, I don't want to go through this. Okay, now, courses. Let's go to you guys, 220A, and this is homework 22. Uh-oh, view as a student. I guess I missed one. All right, let's restart the work. All right, here we go. All right, now then, we're going to work through this one. All right, now then, what I want you to do, let's go to 75. Then go to 100 again. There, that. Can I get that to be better? There we go. All right. Okay. This one's kind of a fun little problem to work. It's, it's just a geometry problem, looking at triangles. All right? And the sum of the angles, theta 1, theta 2, theta, you know. What's the sum of the angles in a triangle? What, 180. That's in good old Euclidean space. We're using Euclidean geometry here, okay? If, if, if you use 
spherical or hyperbolic geometry, that goes away. But anyway, we're just using good old Euclidean geometry. All right, so angle of incidence. So what is, if theta 1, what is theta 1 in, re, what is theta 2 in terms of theta 1? What would that be? What would it be? Yeah, theta 1. There you go. All right, so put that down. That's quiz question 1. Quiz question 1, theta 1. So we'll, it's going to make me put this in. So I've already practiced. I've already done these, so I should be good. Now, it gets a little bit trickier. All right, now find the angle theta 3, which is shown. Where's theta 3? Oh, I got to push B. There we go. In terms of theta 1, what would it be? 9 minus, well, if theta 1 is equal to that, yeah, it looks like that'd be 90 minus theta 1. That's good. Let me put that in real quick. Submit. Is that right? Yeah, let's make that the second question too. All right, but don't, but don't, don't lose it. So you can go back and use it. All right. So anyway, now find theta four. Oh, we got to push this part C. Oh boy. All right. What is theta four going to be? And we have to express it in terms of theta one and alpha. Ooh, 90 minus theta 1 plus alpha, what's that going to get us? You think? All right, let's try it. 90 minus, I don't know about this. I got all confused. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Minus theta 1, what did you say, plus alpha? Think maybe starting to waffle a little bit. No, try again. All right. Anybody else got any ideas? No, 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 no. Let's just take a look at it. Yeah, I can scroll it down a little bit. Okay. Now, what we've got to do, yeah, we've got to go to part C here. What we have to do is we have to find theta 4. All right, we have to find theta 4. Now, we do know this. Now, Cody was on the right track. She's definitely on the right track here. All right. Let's go to the document cam because I know, I know that theta 3, theta 3 is equal to 90 minus theta 1. Okay. So here we go. What am I doing? Oh, document camera. All right. Let's go to the, let's go to the lamps. Now, to do this, to do this problem, you already knew, all right, let me get one with thicker ink here. You already knew that theta 3 was equal to 90 minus theta 1, right? Theta 3 equals 90 minus theta 1. Let's zoom in a little bit. Make that bigger. There we go, a little clearer. All right, theta minus, all right, now, theta 4, theta 4 equals 180 minus theta 3 minus alpha. Okay? So now, and here's, here's what I think, here's, I think I messed Cody over here a little bit because here's what she was thinking. She's going 80 minus 90 minus theta 1. This is what Jordan said. Hey, wait a minute. Better put in some parentheses. Minus alpha. Okay? Now, what did Ms. Crunchmeister teach you about? You got a negative outside the parentheses. What happens? It becomes a not minus. So this equals 90 plus theta 1. Isn't this what we got? Oh, let's go back to the computer. Oh. I see what we did. So we're supposed to put plus here? 
and minus here. Hey, now we're cooking with gas. All right, now then, part, all right, I'm going to have you all do part D for your quiz. Here we go. Ready, set, go. Part D. We'll scroll this down. Theta 6. Go ahead and answer. We're going to assume that theta 4 is less than 90. What they want us to do is find out what theta 6 is equal to. In terms of, now remember, you got to go all the way back and put that in terms of theta 1 and alpha. Take a minute or two to figure that one out. Yeah, you all work, work together. Can I click the hint? No, no, we're almost there. Alpha minus theta 1? Okay. All right, now, first of all, first of all, let's take a look at what we've got here before we go to the hints. Now, that's what I like about these problems is you guys can go to the hints and they'll, wa they'll walk the dog. They'll walk you right through it, okay? That's what, but what goes wrong is when you get to the actual exercises, they don't have any hints anymore. Okay, but right here they still have hints. Now look, what about theta 5 and theta 6? What are they? Equal. Ah, they're not equal. What do we talk about angles? What are they? Congruent. I'm sorry. But yeah, they're equal. All right, so theta 5 and theta 6. Well, we're actually putting numbers in there. You're right. They are equal. All right, so theta 5 and theta 6 are equal. All right, now then. So what is theta 5 in relationship to theta 4? Yeah, they're, they're complementary, right? Because theta 5 plus theta 4 equals, here's the normal, here's the normal, so they're complementary angles. So theta 5 plus theta 4 is 90. So theta 5, which equals theta 6, so here's what I did. Here's what I did. And uh, I had some success with it. Da, da, da. So theta 6, well, theta 5, you found out that theta 5 equals theta 6, which was 90 minus theta 4, where here's theta 4, which is 90 plus theta. So if I put that in there, basically what happens, you got to change all that stuff on the inside. So you got 90 minus 90 minus theta 1 plus alpha. So you wind up with what? Alpha minus theta 1 or minus theta 1 plus alpha, either one. That'll work. So you got that. Good, 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 good. Let's go on to the next one. Let's try some more. Now, that one took a while. That was only supposed to take seven minutes, but you got, got, kind of got to get used to this stuff. Oh, I like this problem. This is a good pro Oh, I like it because I got it correct. All right, so there you go. Now, um, what am I supposed to do? Restart the work. Come on now. Help a brother out. Let's restart this thing. Difficulty three. Now this might be a little bit, see, when it's difficulty three, I'm like, nah, we probably not, better not put this on a test. Okay? All right, so here we go. Now, all right, a beam of light from monochromatic laser shines into a piece of glass. The glass has a thickness L, and the index of refraction N is 1.5. The lave, the... The wavelength of the laser light in a vacuum is L divided by 10, and its frequency is F. 
In this problem, neither the constant C nor its numerical value should appear in any of your answers. Okay, so how long does it take for a short pulse of light to travel from one end of the glass to the other? In other words, travel through the thickness of, of this glass, which has a thickness of L. All right, first of all, what do we know about time? It's to find the time, if, if we're going to assume a constant velocity, okay? So uh, VT equals L. Right? So L over V, L over V for this thing is going to equal T. All right? Huh. I wonder what V is. Let's take a look here. All right? Let's take a look here. Here's your hint. Da, 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 da. How to approach this problem? It goes right in. You will find the speed of light in glass uh, in terms of the index of refraction, which they said it was 1.5. And remember what we said, the speed of light is equal to the speed of light given in a medium is the frequency and the wavelength in that medium. All right, so find the speed of light in glass. All right, here's what we have to do. Did that help us at all? Nah, so we go to these hints. There we go. Find the frequency in glass. Does that help us? Because you need F. All right. Okay. Here's another way to look at it. Here's another way to look at it. All right. Basically, here's what you're doing. What happened? Uh-oh. The thing turned off. Oh. Oh, no. Did it just go out? It's not blinking? Blinking orange should be blinking green. Is it blinking green now? No. Okay. All right. There we go. All right. Let's just do this problem this way. Good old-fashioned way. Let's do it on the board. All right. Here we go. That was weird. I think I probably hit the wrong button, and now it's having to... All right, so here we go. Now, we know this. We know that T is equal to L over V. All right, here is one of the, here's one of the equations that you kind of need to know from this. You need to know that the index of refraction equals C over V. Oh, okay. Well, now then, can I get, um, and I think they told me that N was equal to 1.5. All right, so the, the V going through there, and what else did they tell me? C is always constant, and that the what? What did they say about lambda? L was 10. L over 10 is what? The wavelength? For what? In the medium? Okay. All right, so in the glass, L in the glass is equal to L over 10. Okay? All right, so here's what we got. We got N equals lambda naught times, um, times the frequency divided by L over 10 times the frequency. And is there any other information that they gave us? All right, let me go back to it. I, I've at least got it right here. All right. Here's basically the problem. It says uh, the wavelength is L over 10 and the frequency is F. There we go. And, the, um, and so it's going to travel through there. Here we go. And what did they want us to do? Use the numeric given for n, right, in the introduction. All right, cool. All right, so how do I get rid of the, I, I forgot how I'm good, supposed to get rid of that lambda not there.
Okay. All right. So basically, here's what you're saying is the um, L over 10. So we've got, huh. I need what V is. God damn it. All right. N equals C. Okay. And the frequencies cancel. No, nah, we don't need a frequency. Yeah, because it should be 15 over S. Yeah. And frequency is lambda. That's what it's measured at. That's how you figure out. The frequency? Right. No, the wavelength. The frequency is, is not the wavelength. The, the frequencies cancel. The frequencies, the frequencies cancel. And so basically, I get V. Oh, gosh dang it. This is driving me nuts because I just did it and now I'm stuck here. All right. Should make this just a quiz problem. So you all figured this out. But Cody's on the right track. So basically, the frequencies cancel out and I get L over 10 times 1.5 equals. That's that's the one that doesn't make any sense. All right. Uh huh. Right. Oh, that's why you were shown how to do it. All right. Ha! Ah. Gosh, dang it! What am I doing wrong? Yes. What? Because I I can't I can't I I know how Cody's seeing it, but I yes, Richard. What is it? V, there we go, equals C over N. Okay? Just, just lambda naught, so V is equal to lambda, but it's not the lambda over L. Over N, right? L over T equals lambda times F over N. And Uh, I'm going to come back to it later. I'll, I'll come back to it. I'm going to come back to it on Friday. It's pissing me off because I already did it once, and I, I can't. I'm missing something. So it's, uh, don't, don't film that. Anyway, um, gosh, dang it. It's making me mad. All right, anyway, because somehow you wind up with L. L equals, uh, basically, L equals uh, 15 equals 15, and in terms of frequency, oh, you had to leave, oh, so you had to leave the frequency. You're right. So that was doing me no good. Oh, okay. All right. So now it's in terms of frequency. All right. Got it. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I don't want to do that one anymore. I'm tired of looking at it. It's <laughs> making me mad. All right. What's that? No, you want to have something like that on the test. Basically, um, you'll have, now this one's a little bit more straightforward. This is just a regular learning goal. Y'all can work through this one. Um, use your hints. This is the third one. I was going to, I was going to try and make this until um, I got stuck on that one. God, that's making me mad. All right. Because this stuff's not that hard. It's not, it's not that hard. All right. Anyway. Okay. So now. Oh, you guys don't have the thing anymore. All right. Anyway, here we go. Let's, let's talk about one of their other problems that they gave you that's this like out of the book type thing that I put on there. 
Um, let's take a look at this. Oh, here we go. Here's problem 20. Here's what problem 20 says. It says this. It says, a beam of light is incident from air onto a flat piece of polystyrene. Okay? And then you got to look back in your, you got to look back in your uh, tables here. And it says polystyrene is 1.49, N equals 1.49 um, for your polystyrene. Okay? What's that? Nah, your quiz is done. Your quiz went away with that last problem that's got me so angry. Uh, I'm actually looking at the exercise problem number 20 in the exercises. All right? So here's one of your problems. Here's what it says. And this would be a test type problem, not that last one. Um, but anyway, this would be a test type problem. Here we go. And it says, here's what their question is. Their question is this. A beam of light uh, from on a flat piece is at an angle of 55 degrees. So it's coming in here. And right here is where we measure theta i. So theta i is equal to 55 degrees. N up here is equal to 1.00. N down here is equal to 1.49. All right? Now then, their question, though, is you have to be careful because the question says this. The question says this. What angle does the refracted ray make with the plane of the surface? All right? So in other words, first of all, if this thing's coming in like this, is it going to bend towards the normal or away from the normal? Just on the way this end is, since this end is less than this end, what's it going to do? Bends towards. All right, so it's going to bend towards here. And here's the angle that they want you to get for your answer. All right, there's the angle we, we want for our answer. But we got to use Snell's law to find this angle, theta 2. All right? And so that's not too bad. I, I actually am glad we're doing this one. N, so what you do is you set this up as N times sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. That's your bread and butter for doing these problems. All right? For doing all of these little refraction problems, this is Snell's law is the one that works. Okay? What's that? Yeah, we got to find theta 2, but the actual answer is they want phi, which is equal to 90 minus theta 2. Okay? But we've got to find theta 2, which isn't that hard to do, because we've got 1.00 times the sine of 55 equals 1.49 times the sine theta 2. So you basically get the sine of 55 over 1.49 equals the sine of theta 2, and so theta 2 equals the inverse sine of sine of 55 over 1.49. So basically, theta 2 always works out to be the inverse sine of n1 sine theta 1 divided by n2. Well, duh. Just divide the N2 over here and take the inverse sine. Okay? All right. Well, we got three minutes to go. So there, there's one problem. There we go. Had some success. You can, and then the rest of them, those first couple problems, if you use the hints, they work out pretty good. All right? All right. So anyway, we're done. Yeah, because.